hip hop was supposed to be musical revolutionary music. And it was for a period of time. The white power structure saw how they could use hip hop to destroy the image of the black male. Hip hop is an agent of white supremacy. Sheesh. DIYers. DIYers. This past week, Dr. Umar Johnson was a guest on the Art of Dialogue YouTube channel. Dr. Umar speaks about why hip hop is white supremacy and rappers push death and destruction on kids. Whatever do you mean? You know, my biggest issue with all the rappers would be when are y'all gonna do more for the community? Because see, my issue is this. Right now, we're celebrating the 50th anniversary of hip hop. Do you mean to tell me we're gonna let this year long celebration go by and nobody's gonna have a serious conversation about whether hip hop has actually been a benefit or not to the black community? I haven't seen a conversation, a YouTube, a town hall meeting, Sheesh. a BET special. I don't see anybody talking about the ramifications, the negative impact that hip hop has had on the black community. It is a very hard conversation, especially for rappers that are contributors of this culture, especially in a very celebratory year, 50 years, 50th anniversary of hip hop. And just like in any culture, right? We're hyper focusing on this one because this is our focus right now. This is not to say that no rapper has ever done anything good for the community. There's a lot of examples that we can use when we think of folks like Killer Mike. But you know when he said something? I had a memory that got triggered. Where did all the panels go? South by Southwest, the AC3, they exist. But I always find it interesting how you don't always see video from those particular events unless they allowed cameras in there. And secondly, why are those conversations no longer on primetime TV? There used to be a time, maybe it was before your time, but for those who, who remember BET at one point when they had Teen Summit, when they had these even like daytime talk shows that would bring on influential rappers and they'd have an open dialogue about the state of the culture, the state of the influence that rappers have. You don't see those anymore. And I really just wonder what happened to them and why are they not as prevalent as they once were? There was a time that you could see a politician debating with a young bun B. There was a time that you see, <laughs> there was a time that you saw Bill O'Reilly invite Cameron, but there is children. How do you hurt children by promoting to be an entrepreneur and a CEO right. and to do right? By, looking at a for, principal. By example, for example, you yeah, you hold it, hold it. Why you're, you're looking, looking at a principal. Why you don't want to talk? You mad? You mad? You mad? You mad? We don't see these conversations anymore. Where are those healthy dialogues? Now, the first thing the hip hop artist is going to say. I'm only rapping what I live. But you don't live it no more. Mm. The minute you start making money, you moved out the neighborhood. So why are you still rapping about drugs and death when you don't live around that no more? I have that question, but I'm not the one to answer that because I don't rap about the drugs and the death. I always have believed, and I don't look, I'm not saying this like I'm on some kind of pedestal, but I've always believed that words carry power maybe because i came from a church background and my mom always told me about the power of the tongue and i thought about that and it was something that i just i've said some pretty reckless ish. i didn't probably even say some sexy shit at some point in time not proud of it but i was young and, and no making excuses i was just being an asshole at that point in time but with that said i started to recognize the older i got how music circulates and the impact that even on my level i could have on somebody's views of the world or at least that voice suggesting to them different ways to look at it. If we are indeed making music that is just us being like Razkaz said, the CNN of the hood, and we're just giving the perspective, at what point does it pivot? At what point do we get to hear about the next evolution in your life? Now, I understand this is about money, and I understand that at some point in time, somebody just gonna say the very age old argument, that shit don't make no money. Yet and still, we do not see people staying with it as consistently as they stick with the murder the drugs and the violence. That means you're a hypocrite. If you're telling me you're rapping what you live, you don't live it no more. And if you're so dedicated to telling the ghetto tale, why did you move out the neighborhood? <laughs> Uncomfortable conversations are going to be had today on this channel. I know this is, might not be the kind of controversial stuff that you're willing to see from this channel. I know I like to paint things and make it really easy and digestible. I'm not in the mood for that today. This is a real conversation that needs to happen. If the environment is something that you couldn't wait to get out of, if the lifestyle is something that was a threat to you on a regular basis, you finally have found a route out and you've seen better. 
You've been ex- you've experienced better so much so that you're even moving your family away from these environments. When do we actually get to hear the real? Not to say those topics that you're saying are not real for somebody's lifestyle, but when do we hear the real? When I hear a rapper like Future talk about I wouldn't I don't do nearly the amount of drugs I rap about. My question is, then what do you do? And why don't you rap about that more? I understand that it's a rhetorical question. I know why, but somebody got to ask these questions. Why do you send your kids to private schools? So you live in a white neighborhood. You send your kids to white private schools. You moved out the black ghetto the minute you had enough money to do so. But yet you're telling me the reason you're still rapping about death drugs, jail, and homicide is because that's the life you live. You don't live it no more. So for me, I'm looking at hip hop and I'm saying to myself, it is the most influential music genre in the world. Facts. 50 years, a multi-billion dollar industry. And in 50 years, the hip hop community hasn't built a single relevant institution for the black community anywhere. I have not done my research and I probably will after this, but that's that's a hell of, that, that's a lot to digest. Think about that for a minute. Think about that. Look, Dr. King began his career with the Montgomery bus boycott in 1955. Dr. King was assassinated in 1968. That means Dr. King had 13 years. Look at what he did in 13 years. Let's go to the Black Panther Party. The Black Panther Party was founded in 1966. The revolutionary phase of the Black Panther Party was pretty much over with by 1971. Five years, the legends we speak of, the legendary movements we speak of made more traction because they were very specific about their goals. Yes, these entities like the Black Panther Party were infiltrated, the Cointel Pro, all these things were strategically infiltrated, right? Even with Martin Luther King, the fact that he was able to have a 13 year window that made up the legend that we know today and still talk about, right? Inaccurately, accurately at times, but we still talk about today because these were very focused moments. The bigger point, at least that I'm getting from this right now is that the window we've had in hip hop to make those monumental shifts. I think things have happened that have shifted the psyche. Not everybody has been pushing one thing, right? There's been some people who have slipped through the cracks and have made great impact upon the way people think, the way that they interact with each other, the way that they're accepting of other lifestyles and cultures. People have made great impacts. But when we talk about the folks that really have a hypnotization upon the people, folks who dominate the charts, a Drake, for example, while he's busy sampling every culture that he can find the accent for, while he's busy rapping and singing the same kind of way he was in his early 30s and late 20s, that's a window of time that something that could have shifted could have happened if the focus had been there. But once again, because everybody is so everywhere with their goals in this, unfortunately, these are the predicaments that we see ourselves in. I feel like at least DIY. So the DIYs to figure it out. Hip hop has been around for 50 years I understand. not a single hospital not a single school not a single bank what killer mike invests into atlanta black owned bank bank black movement gets lift with 45 million investment in startup whose founders include killer mike and andrew young so killer mike was a contributor to a black owned bank in Atlanta that started something called the Bank Black Movement. So I understand the sentiment, but I do think it's important that those who are making the steps in that direction are acknowledged. And I do nothing but tip my hat to Killer Mike because I think that he for sure stands behind a lot of the things that he talks about. How can we call hip hop a blessing to the black community with that type of money being made off of our culture and the community doesn't benefit from it at all? He's speaking truth. I don't give a shit what anybody thinks about his delivery and what he's saying. This is the reason why shit keeps going around in this vicious cycle in this culture we say that we love. Shit keeps going around in the same vicious cycle because we don't like whoever shows up to talk about it. But the message is still the message. And I wouldn't. Oh, no, 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 no. The message is still the message. This shit could have been delivered by a motherfucking onion. What's going on with you, DIYers? Thank you so much for choosing to watch this video. One thing I want to give you a heads up of is that I just released my project called Storm Symphony with my good friend Aaron Barber. 
why should you care? Because I know you didn't come here for my music. You probably came for the content. If you're a rapper or a music producer, there are added bonuses for you actually purchasing the album. If you're a producer, every sample that you hear that was composed originally by Aaron Barber, you will get a royalty-free pack of 10 melodic loops that you can use royalty-free for your beats to sell, your own music, and all that good stuff. Also, FL Studio has partnered with me to give out five copies of FL Studio for those of you that want to start off your production career. But Curtis, I don't know how to use FL Studio. How the hell would that benefit from that? Well, along with one of the other tiers, you're also going to get my FL Studio Beginners course. So this is the way that I am incentivizing those of you that actually still buy music because you know what? Fine art still sells. And I made some fine ass art on this project that I think you're going to really, really enjoy. Make sure that you go to CurtisKing.com for more information. Now back to the video. So you come to the community and give out a few pair of sneakers. You come to the community and you throw a couple parties. Hello. And in exchange for some damn turkeys and chickens and some sneakers, you push death and destruction on our children for a living and we're supposed to be okay with that because you dropped off some clothes and some turkeys. That's the time we own. Call these rappers on a bullshit. As those of us that are in here, we cannot rely upon the most popular people with the biggest platforms to come lead the way. Because those niggas is not leaders. Excuse me. Those men and women, sometimes boys and girls, are not leaders. They're bag chasers. DIYers, those of us that know better. That responsibility lays on us now. Not just me, because I got a platform. That's on you too. If you feel it in your soul that something is just not sitting right, and you know in your soul there's a reason to pivot, do something about it. It's not acceptable until hip hop begins to be a blessing for the black community. Hip hop is an agent of white supremacy. Sheesh. Yeah, that turkey stuff. Somebody gonna have to tell the truth, and I'm gonna tell a it. A turkey? We don't need no more damn turkeys. <laughs> and then the rapper will say, "Well, we didn't invent violence." You're right. You didn't invent violence. There was gang banging before hip hop. There was drug dealing before hip hop. There was black on black crime before hip hop. But let me tell you where hip hop is guilty. Hip hop glamorized it. Mm. Hip hop glorified it. Hip hop put a spotlight on negative aspects of black culture. So no, you didn't create it, but music is a very influential art form. Your brain is controlled by what it hears and what it sees. So we all know people who was influenced by gangster rap and decided to join the gang, decided to start drug dealing, start, started to gang bang. You know why I don't think that's an extreme statement anymore? There was a point in time where I used to be like, nah, that's cap. Hip hop ain't got that kind of influence on somebody's decision. These are grown ass men and grown ass women who had pre-existing mental health issues and that was the real, the real contributor to it. Be that as it might or may not be, I think that it's important to zoom back out and say, isn't it interesting that, fellas, I know you can relate to this, when you got yourself a little baddie, you feel me back in my dating days? Hi, honey. Back in my dating days, you got yourself a little baddie? You got yourself a little baddie? You got yourself a little baddie, you feel me? What did you say when you brought her over your crib for the first time? You got your little apartment? What did you say? I'm going to put the music on to set the mood. So we're saying that music has the ability to set the mood before you get freaky and Netflix and chill. But when it comes to constant conversations about drugs, the constant conversations about really scarcity mindsets, that's where it doesn't have influence. Because you got to remember, hip hop takes off at the end of the radical period of the Black Panther Party, the early 70s. You know why? Because you had all this passion and young black males needed to take this passion and put it into something. Huey P. Newton just got out of jail. Bobby Seal just got out of jail. Black Liberation Army, some of them are going to jail. So you got all these young black men, but our leaders are being killed. Our activists are being killed. Hmm. Our revolutionaries are being locked up. But you got this passion. We ain't got the guts to go to the streets. We don't want to get involved in the liberation fight, but we want to do something. So let's create some revolutionary black music. And that was part of the motivation for hip hop. The problem was that after a couple years, the white power structure saw how they could use and exploit hip hop to destroy the image of the black male. And that's when they introduced gangster rap into hip hop. And gangster rap has been dominating hip hop 
ever since the mid 80s. So whenever I thought about the idea of revolutionary music, right, I've had mixed feelings about it. Not because it hasn't been like shout out to Dead Prez, shout out to even as early as like a Nina Simone, right, who made, I think, some really revolutionary music that was ahead of ahead of her time. But when I think about more contemporaries like the Dead Prez, when I think about folks like Most Deaf that create this revolutionary music. The thing that I loved about those in particular, even to a certain degree, Talib Kweli at one point in time, what I loved about that movement was that it felt like the music wasn't trying to be political to be political. I grew up on Public Enemy, Chuck D. You know what I'm saying? Like my moms and pops both played the hell out of them damn cassettes. That was the, the 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 energy of the time. My only issue with political rap, and I met this more so in the independent space, is that I would meet up and coming rappers. They're not independents, up and coming rappers who were political. They were rebels without a cause. They just wanted to be against something. They really hated their relationship with their dad and they're just using the government as interchangeable name. They had very empty accusations of the things that they were talking about. They were recycling the shit that they read about that they never actually researched. That's the kind of political rap that I was like, this shit corny. But I will say this, there was some revolutionary music that wasn't like, hi, I'm revolutionary, hi, look at me. It was, I am already a re revolutionary, let me share with you all the different things that comes along with that. I think about a dead prayers in a song they had called Mind Sex. They talk about an intimacy in that song that is not just about physical sex, like every other rapper is talking about. They talked about connecting with another human being, another woman on a level, a mental level where it's like, mm, that's so much more stronger than what we can do physically. That to me is revolutionary music because in the time period where everybody's talking about this particular thing, you found a way to make it cool. You found a way to make being smart cool because so many people will make it out to be i'm a, i'm an example of it i don't want to make this about me but when folks come to my channel or they listen to me talk the first thing that they have the the accusation of me is you're trying to be white i say well why would you say that i'm trying to be white when obviously i'm not well because of the way you be speaking you say shit clearly you be using big words I've been hearing that shit since I was in middle school. <laughs> and at the time, it hurt my feelings when I was in middle school. The older now, I, I just come from the schooling of, of like the homie Stevie Crook says. He says, ignorance is weak and being smart is strong. It's a lot of strength in that. And ain't nobody saying nothing about it and ain't nobody doing anything about it as well. Hip hop was supposed to be musical revolutionary music. And it was for a period of time when you had your public enemy, your most deaf when you had your conscious rapper, your KRS-One, your Boogie Down Productions, your Poor Righteous Teachers, your X-Clan, your Queen Latifah, you had it. But once that gangster rap came and the brothers in the city saw that I could sell a million records with no radio play and talk about sex, drugs, and this and that, they ran white to it. And so the rapper and the athlete became the role model mm. in the 80s because that's right around the time that professional black men started benefiting from affirmative action and civil rights set asides and white college scholarships. And what did they do when they came home from college? They moved to the white suburb. Mm. So black professional men abandoned black boys. So they automatically turned to the athletes and the gangster rappers. And that's where we are right now. The role models <laughs> are the athletes and the gangster rappers. Two populations of black males who ain't thinking about thinking about doing nothing for the inner city. I want to give folks the opportunity to explain their stances because it's not about this. This is not this is a progressive conversation. You're making it about the man himself. And I think that this is the reason shit keeps going around in circles. You said Omar ain't doing shit about it. He's talking about it right now and I'm reacting to it. What are you doing about it now? That is not meant to be confrontational. That is a question. If we can put him there for speaking on it, what are you doing about it? Trolling or not, I just we, we, we got to bring all of this shit to the light, because if you're in this room, I got respect for you, first of all, for choosing to be here. What we not going to do is be agents of distraction in here. And this is not even me on some like black consciousness talk. This is just as a man first, as a family man, there's things that I'm going to be sending my young black child into this world and he's going to have to make sense of it. In addition to that, being on a spectrum. Having autism, I'm going to have to figure out ways to have these conversations of why I can listen to this, but tell him to do the opposite. I'm just somebody who don't got all the answers, but I'm somebody that's trying to figure it out. And still, even at 38, I just want to figure this shit out because I'm tired. I'm tired of living this life like I'm going to be here forever. I'm tired of living this life like I got all the answers when I know I don't. I'm sponging up as much information as possible. And if I get a new perspective and it can help, then I want to learn that and I want to go from there.
So my final thoughts is this, irregardless of where the message is coming from, dice down the message. Hip hop is absolutely in need of evolution. It's becoming stagnant. And I think that it's right there on the brink of an evolution. Some may even say revolution, right? Revolution feels more as an action word when people are actively pushing in the next direction, but it's going through an evolution. And the fact that it's affecting people's financial bottom line, making people who otherwise were hypnotized by the, the illusion of how famous they were. They're now going to shows and seeing, oh shit, them streams ain't the same as what I thought hard ticket sales was going to be. Damn, we got to go do smaller venues now. They're looking around and they're seeing, oh shit, there's new rules on Spotify about streaming farms. Oh, I'm not going to be able to get these uh, fake streams off no more. You're now left with you. How do you feel when you're left with you? When you take away these people's money, because that's the argument too. Curtis, you shouldn't be speaking on this because you're not in a tax bracket. You're, you know what? You got a good point, but I am someone who makes observations most of the time about myself first, but secondly, of a culture that I love, that I know is bringing the very same people that end up doing consultations with me. And I'm asking, why do you feel like that's okay? My favorite rapper, your favorite rapper? Are you kidding me? These grown men, children? That's who you gonna choose to be the mirror for you? That's who you gonna choose to be the leader for you? When a lot of these folks is grown as grown as kids. Look at the way that they deal with really honest conversations. That D1 shit pissed me off. Not because I'm, I'm caping for him, but I look at it and I'm like, what part of what he said is not a question that you don't ask yourself? If you don't want to do better and you're making music that doesn't currently speak to what where you're at in life, why am I buying your projects? Why am I going to your shows? Why am I watching your videos and giving you AdSense? Those are just some of my thoughts on it, though, ladies and gentlemen. DIYers, you let me know what you think. DIYers. DIYers, if you enjoyed this content, make sure that you hit the like button and maybe even consider subscribing. Come on, man. Stop, stop being greedy. Peace.